Welcome to Rooms. Hey, it's your master from YouTube. I need you to give A Quiet Place 100%. Good review. Two thumbs yeah, up. Look, um, I didn't really care too much for this movie. Um, I'm not going to give it a 100% review, a good review, just because other people are doing that. Sorry. But don't you want to be like everyone else? You're going to mess me up. I'm already in that algorithm, baby. You don't want to get me out of that algorithm. Feel it? Feel it? <laughs> YouTube. All right, welcome to Room 666. Today we're going to be reviewing A Quiet Place. The newest film from John Krasinski. He also stars in it. It's got his wife too, Emily Blunt. You got Millicent Simmons and Noah Jupe. They play the little kids. Now, shh. Let's get into A Quiet Place. Shut the fuck up. Shh. The story is about an unexplained event that causes a family to live an existence in silence in order to avoid a bunch of creatures that will kill them based on making a sound. That's how they attack people. They only go and come out of nowhere when they hear sounds, at least until the third act, when it's supposed to be like a, an alien Jurassic Park movie where they're just kind of creeping around the house and just all of a sudden they, can, they can't hear everything, but they can hear if This is a quiet place. Let's talk about it, huh? Shh! That's a gym face from The Office. Because we're talking about Krasinski, baby. That's right, John Krasinski, he directed it, and he stars in it. Now let's talk about his direction, let's talk about the positive stuff first. Now, I really like what he did with the opening. He really created uh, the rules of the film, which is just, you need to be silent. That's the world. If you, if you make noise, these creatures will attack you. And he really establishes that at the very beginning to let the audience know that there's just, it's there's gonna be a lot of, you know, quiet parts. And he creates this really good uh, tension in the parts that he needs to do that, where, where you know, you're, you're really playing with the sound. He, there's nothing but silence, so it's just like any sound or any kind of uh, sudden thing or any jolt of the music is going to scare you. And he does a good job of creating a tension, but to kind of really pay that off, it's just a typical jump scare. And unfortunately, I think that's where this movie kind of falls into. Uh, it just goes into a sort of typical mainstream jump scare film. It's not a horror film. Um, I wouldn't call this a horror film. Something like The Baba Duke uh, or It Comes at Night. Those are horror films where The Baba Duke was about grief. Uh, sure, there was that creature, The Baba Duke, but it really was about grief and getting and moving past something like that. It Comes at Night. There wasn't this it that was out in the forest that was coming to get them. The it was the people themselves dealing with this situation where they didn't know what was going on and they had to protect themselves and protect their own against each other. Uh, here, Krasinski tries to kind of do more family drama stuff, uh, but it really comes off as kind of a TV movie, a lot of his uh, direction and his cinematography, and even his particular acting in those moments uh, come off very uh, TV, kind of TV show acting. Um, and, and I don't mean like the good TV, you know, there's great TV going on. I'm talking about like kind of ABC, uh, you know, drama TV. And that's what it kind of looked and felt like. Um, one thing that uh, I really enjoyed the creature design, I will say that, uh, the way those creatures looked. This isn't um, the kind of, ooh, this is like the indie kind of uh, breakout horror film of the year that we've got with stuff like, you know, that I mentioned before, Baba Duke or It Comes a Night or like Get Out, stuff like that, This is actually good. This, you know, this could just go with like the, the sort of the sequels to Insidious and things like that. It really is just that. And, and that's fine if you like that kind of stuff. It just, that's just not for me. And... I don't think uh, Krasinski was the right person for this particular material because he was trying to make it more of like a family kind of drama and I think it fails uh, doing that. Uh, I think it's very cheesy at a lot of moments. And, you know, there's just, I, you know, I don't know. It's just, it's getting a lot of praise and I'm really not sure why and I really wish it had more to it. I was expecting more to it because of what I've heard. But, you know, I, I don't think he really did what he what everyone's saying he did for this film. Krasinski, uh, you know, I, I'm really not looking forward to what you're doing next because I, I haven't seen The Haulers, but I saw uh, the first film you did and it's, it was very forgettable. And, you know, this is just my opinion saying that I'm not really looking forward to it, but I understand the general audience's love for it. General audiences are going to eat this up and I definitely understand it and I, there's no judging you for that. That's totally cool because, like I said, it's just, you know, you sit back in the seat and... You know, there's no sound. And when there is sound, you jump. I mean, that's really all he's doing, you know? And a lot of people are giving this praise because of the silence of it. And, you know, most people are used to a lot of sound and a lot of images coming at them. And so there's, ooh, it's, ooh, it's silent. So this is different, you know? So 
That's cool, though. Krasinski. Better luck next time, bro. You didn't get me. Ah, yes. The lovely Emily Blunt. She's in this film. She's Krasinski's wife. And she's Krasinski's wife in real life and in the film. And she is uh, fantastic. I love Emily Blunt. She does a great job in everything she does. And here, she really uh, uses... Uh, her facial expressions because that's what you need to do right because most of this film is there's not a lot of talking there's sign language you have to show fear you have to show all the emotions through your face and you know not everyone really does a good job in there but Emily Blunt is fantastic here uh, all the moments that she's in uh, when she is uh, pregnant I'm, I'm pretty sure that's not giving anything away because I'm pretty sure that's in the trailers she's pregnant in this and that's another thing that I I like to bring up is that you know <laughs> and you're living in a world where you can't make any sound how are you having sex right how are you having sex that's any good, right? First of all, because you got to be all quiet. And then, how are you having babies? You, you, you're making babies, and, you know, babies are loud. So, well, there's just very bad decisions. Very bad parenting in this film. Uh, but, in moments where Emily Bunt, you know, she's pregnant, and, you know, she, she's tense moments, and she's, you know, she's got to be quiet. Those are really good moments because she's acting great in it. She's giving this material more than it deserves, but she's giving it what it needs at the same time. So Emily Blunt, I want to see you in more stuff. I wish, you know, what she does in Sicario is great. I really wish she was Black Widow. She's supposed to be Black Widow. I wish she was Captain Marvel. Emily Blunt, I love you. Dump John Krasinski and come with uh, Jordinski. <laughs> Up next, we have Noah Jupe. He plays the son in this film. And look, I, I don't want to call this kid a bad actor because he's not. It's just that... He wasn't the right actor for this, okay? Because this requires you to be the, the silence. So it's gonna. You need a lot of. You need to tell. You need to convey a lot of emotions with your face. You need to convey fear. You need to convey uh, love. You need to just convey everything. You need to do that without saying it. And this is all the kid does every time something happens in the movie. If you even look at the stills for the promotion of this film, there's a, there's a thing of him in a car going. That's all he does. Anytime there's something that happens, anytime a sound, anytime something breaks, anytime something kills something, he goes. And I just, it drove me crazy. It drove me insane. Um, I, I just, I, like I said, I, I can't say that it was the worst acting ever, but it just those moments, those things, he just didn't work for this. Like I said, it was like a TV movie kind of acting. And, um, you know, I'm sure he has a great career ahead of him. I'm sure he can do good stuff. It's just, it didn't work for me, especially in this particular thing. Uh, sorry, Noah, I just couldn't just, I just couldn't take it just go, 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 the whole time, you know? You know, I mean, you could have busted, you couldn't bust out a, a gym face. All right, we have Millicent Simmons. Um, I, I think that's how you say it. Uh, she plays the daughter in this film, and she is deaf, and she's also deaf in real life. Um... So I think she did a very good job in this film. Uh, I didn't mind her. Um, I don't think she was amazing or anything. Uh, it was kind of the same sort of thing. I think uh, she did well in certain parts in terms of acting with just her facial expressions, but it didn't always work. It did always kind of feel like, just like, like I said, jump scare horror film. Um, but, you know, there, there really isn't much for these characters to do. Uh, there's a lot of attempts of them trying to make this kind of like family drama and tension between them. Like, for instance, uh, John Krasinski is always down in uh, the basement just working on, uh, you know, like a hearing aid for his daughter. And in the basement, there's a whiteboard. And you always see this whiteboard. It's always behind him. And it says the stupidest shit on it. Uh, it says, like, literally, it just says monsters. Uh, weakness, question mark sound loud noises don't do just literally the dumbest shit and it, it so and that's all that's down there there's literally nothing else that he's got like security cameras but there's nothing else down there but the stupidest whiteboard and, and that's why that's another thing i could talk about with krasinski and his directing and that amateur i but we're talking about the actress anyway all that's all he's got down there in that basement and in one scene she's gonna go she's gonna walk down there because she's curious as what her dad does down there and he stops her for some reason and he makes this big old dramatic thing about why she can't go down there but there's really no reason why she can't go uh what is he doesn't i guess he doesn't want her to see the stupid whiteboard that he has but the whole point is that you know th these actors don't have really that much to work with 
And so she did the best that she could, and I think she did a good job. And uh, I know that she's kind of a breakout uh, star. She was in a, a Todd Haynes film, I think, recently in Wonderstruck. So uh, it'd be cool to see more stuff from her, especially because she is deaf, and to play deaf characters, a real deaf person playing a deaf character is a cool thing to see. And like I said, she wasn't bad. It's just this material itself just wasn't, I mean, it's just not that great. So she did, you know, she did what she had to do. Good job. I didn't hate A Quiet Place. I don't think it's a bad movie. But I found myself sitting there while I was watching it, nitpicking at certain things. And to me, that kind of makes it a bad movie in a way. Uh, it doesn't make it a good movie because instead of really paying attention to what was going on, I was more noticing the, the little things that you can nitpick about the story. And I don't know, I just don't think that's a good thing. But the audience that I saw with at the screen, they loved it. Uh, they they were they were screaming. They were they were <gasps> they were making all kinds of sounds. So it's definitely something if you just like a typical jump scare horror film, uh, this is right up your alley. I would say definitely go rush out and see it. It's going to be no surprise if it makes all kinds of money at the box office because. You know, people love this kind of stuff, and that's perfectly fine. It's just not for me. Uh, I uh, don't think that it's anything sort of special. Uh, it was just kind of a run-of-the-mill uh, jump scare horror film that, you know, you, you could just... You, it could have been straight to Netflix, and that would have been fine. Honestly, really. It really is that quality for me. But, like I said, if you saw the trailer and you're like, oh man, this is a cool premise, I want to check this out, by all means, check it out. But if you saw the trailer and you're just like, eh, how, is this really going to work? Let me tell you, it doesn't. So, I don't know. You know, every, this thing's got 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. I have no idea why. I, I, it's, it's, I don't know. It's the beginning of the year. People need shit to praise. I get it. It's fine. It's fine. You know, it's, it's, everyone needs that. It's okay. It's whatever. Um, also, real quick, i just like to say that, speaking of the screening, quick shout out to John from The Real Talk. I actually saw him out in person at the screening. Uh, we ran into each other. Um, when you do this uh, YouTube channel for a while, you start to think that other YouTube channels are just fake bots and they're not real. Uh, John's real, he's out there. So uh, anyone who watches my channel who doesn't subscribe to The Real Talk, definitely check him out. I'll put a link to his channel in the subscription. And again, you know. Uh, the one thing I would say though is that if we could hire these monsters to work at movie theaters, to kill people who talk during movie theaters. I'm all for that. Love it, John Krasinski. If you can get on that instead of this movie, hell, I'll be your biggest fan. Thanks, guys.